right, so you can just never have too much practice when it comes to these sorts of questions. Now, part A, B, and C of this, pretty straightforward. Um, it's these parts here, D, E, and F, that get tricky. So I'm going to first just really fast jump through A, B, and C. If you don't want to see A, B, and C, just fast forward to that time right there. Okay, so express A, C in terms of B and D. Okay, so if we want to know vector A, C, the way to figure out A, C is to move along there and along there. So uh, A, D plus D, C equals a, C. So if we want to express A, C in terms of B and D, it's going to be equal to um, D, which is that vector right there, plus B, which is that vector right there, D plus B. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, um, B is up there. These vectors are parallel. We're told that in the question. It's a parallelogram. If these vectors are parallel and it's a parallelogram, they're the same length as well. So they're the same vector. Vectors only have uh, magnitude and direction. The position of them doesn't matter. This vector is that vector. So first answer is uh, D plus B. Some people think you've got to put that in alphabetical order. You don't. B plus D would also be a correct answer. All right. Well, what about A to E? Okay. So if we want to do A to E, where E is the midpoint between these two, the way that we're doing that is going from A to B. Uh, just following that line there. Not very good at it. And then from here down to there. Okay, so this vector here is vector B, we can see that, and this is exactly half of this, which means it's half of vector D. So the vector AE, this vector here, is equal to this vector B plus this vector, which is half of D. So our answer to that question is B plus half of D. And then finally, it says express uh, D, E in terms of B and D. All right, so we're starting at D and moving up to E. Okay, now we might solve this in two ways. One way would be to follow um, this vector like that and that vector like that. Now, if we were following that vector followed by that vector, this vector is B, and this vector in this direction is D, half of D, but in the opposite direction. D is going that way, that's going that way. So this is negative half D. So that's our solution, B minus half D. All right, now you could, if you wanted to, solve this in a different way. So you could start here, travel along this vector, then travel along that vector, then travel down along that vector, like that. Uh, when you add this vector to this vector to that vector, you get that pink vector there. All right, this vector here is negative D. This vector here is B, and that vector there is half D. So if we do negative D plus B plus half D, we get B minus half D when we simplify that, which is that answer there. My point is there's more than one way to skin a cat. As long as you travel along these paths, you're going to get to an answer. Okay, that was the first three, which are the easy ones. All right, so let's get rid of them. And we're going to do uh, these ones instead. So it says, suppose F is a point on DE. Okay, what's DE? Okay, DE is a line that we can't see, but it is there. It's a line from that point up to that point. 
Okay, so that is vector DE because that point there is E, the one I just drew over. Okay, F is a point on DE and DF equals two-thirds of DE. So confusing. All right, there is a point F on here somewhere. Okay, and DF is equal to two-thirds of DE. Okay, so this is DE and DF is equal to two-thirds of it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If we broke this vector into three parts, one-third of DE, two-thirds of DE, and we're told in our question that DF is equal to two-thirds of DE. I have a feeling that now that we've drawn that, now that we understand what this drawing is, the rest of it's going to be pretty straightforward. Maybe. Let's see. So it says express DF uh, in terms of B and D. Okay, so uh, DF. So if we knew what DE was, we'd be in business. Do we know what DE is? Yeah, we do. We found it earlier. We found it just a second ago. Uh, D is equal to B minus half D. Now, that means, when we roll forward now, that if we want to find uh, DF, there's D, there's F. If we want to find DF, we're just finding two-thirds of this. So DF equals two-thirds of DE which is equal to, oops, that's a three, two-thirds of B minus half D. Okay, that's equal to two-thirds B minus uh, two-thirds times a half is one-third D. Both of these are good answers. I don't know which one the textbook does, but I like them both. All right, so I've gotten rid of that working, but I think the result is going to be useful for our next step. That's usually how these questions work. So uh, let's do our next step. Express AF, express AF in terms of B and D, and hence demonstrate that F lies on AC. Okay, the and hence means using the information you just found, demonstrate this other thing. So obviously I can't do the and hence bit until I've done the first bit. Express AF, so here's A, there's F, so AF, make sure you write it as a vector, it's an arrow, vector AF uh, in terms of B and D. So one way to do that would be to go along this line here, a vector, along this line here, a vector, and uh, this plus this equals that. So that means that AF is equal to this vector here which is uh, just D, plus this vector here, which is DF, and we know exactly what that is. Two-thirds B minus one-third D. All right, that's equal to D minus one-third D, which is uh, two-thirds D, and two-thirds B. All right, two-thirds B plus two-thirds D. Um, okay, what next? All right, it's the and hence bit. And hence, demonstrate that F lies on AC. Okay, uh, to f demonstrate that, let's remember what AC is. AC is this vector uh, up to this vector. So it's that vector there. Okay, it looks like it does. I've drawn it pretty accurately, apparently. Um, we know that vector AC is equal to uh, D plus B, or B plus D. Right? Now, look at, at this thing here. AF is equal to two-thirds of B plus D, right? You can see that AF is a scalar factor of AC. 
If you take AC and multiply it by two thirds, you get AF. Now, that's good uh, because that means that they're moving in the same direction. They're just one's longer and shorter than the other. Uh, but we also need to show that they're on the same point. So we can finish this off. Dem we're demonstrating that F lies on AC by saying AC is a multiple of AF. The fact that they're multiples of each other means that they're moving in the same direction. They're just different sizes. And both start at A. That second part's important for this. If we don't know that they're both starting at A, that wouldn't mean that they're lying on the same thing. Right? Because uh, it could be that one vector was this and one vector was this. So shorter, longer. So they're multiples of each other. But if they're not starting from the same spot, then they're not, they don't lie on each other. Okay. That is um, part B done. Okay. Um, I might just leave this here while we consider the last part and see how we feel about it. Okay, so the question says, uh, calculate the ratio AF to FC. All right, so AF is uh, this piece here. So I'm just going to do that like here. AF. Now AF is equal to, we already know this, two thirds B plus D. Okay, and we're doing the ratio of AF to FC. And this piece here is FC. Uh, we haven't found FC yet, but we know that AC is B plus D. And we know that AF is two thirds of B plus D, which means that FC must be one third of B plus D. Okay, so nicely when we do that, the B plus Ds cancel each other out. And we have two thirds over one third. All right, two thirds over one third. That's two thirds divided by one third. So let's just, I'm going to write this over here. Two thirds divided by one third. You should know that that's two thirds multiplied by three over one, which is equal to two over one. The ratio of AF to FC is 2 is to 1. So down here, 2 is to 1. Oops, up a little bit. 2 is to 1. Okay, um, a really great, great question. So fun.